Welcome to the Gives in the Bank recruiting podcast uh, brought to you by BuckeyeScoop.com. Today is Thursday, August 20th. We're a day late. Uh, there were a couple of things going on this week, uh, to put it mildly, that uh, kind of pushed us back here a day. So uh, we're a day late here, but we're, we're back. We're ready to talk uh, some recruiting. I'm joined by Bill Green, as always. Uh, no guests today. You're stuck with the two of us. So we're going we're gonna to dive into uh, a few different things here. Um, you know, first of all, Bill, I guess, you know, let's talk a little bit about defensive end recruiting. Tanmise Adelaide is out. I don't think he's coming back. I think he'll end up at A&M or Florida, maybe Alabama. Uh, I think those are probably the three right now. Have you heard anything there in terms of where Tunmisi might end up, or have you heard anything? I know you're very tight with Daryl Peterson in that situation. Kind of what are you hearing on those two items right now in terms of where you think Tunmisi could end up and what, if anything, is going on with Daryl Peterson? Well, Tunmisi's all over the board. I mean, you know, he's not going back to IMG. There were some issues there. Going back to Texas, which probably opens it up for, you know, Tom Herman and Jimbo Fisher. Alabama's definitely in it. <clears throat> you know, there was an issue with Florida. He had talked about uh, reclassifying to 2020 and enrolling right away at Florida. They could not make that happen because his academic record with the transferring is not where it needs to be. I think he was a little bit ticked off at that. I think that played some role in why he committed to Ohio State when he did, kind of get back move at Florida. That's why I never – had the I had him number one on my decommitment list from an hour after he committed to Ohio State, and I kept him there right to the end. I never felt it was going to stick. The people that I trust never felt he was coming to Ohio State. So, um, and and I know you know as sharp as Ryan Day and Mark Pantone and that staff is, they knew they knew everything I knew. So I think they were glad to have him in the class, but they looked at that with you know uh, they they knew where they stood. So where do they go from here? You know, I, I really like the in-state kid, Daryl Peterson, and I know you like him a lot too. You know, is he Tamisi? No, I don't think he is. And he's not JT to a Malowau, and he's not Jack Sawyer by any means, but, you know, Daryl's really good. And I would take Daryl over the three they took last year, Ty Hamilton, Darren Henry, Jacoby Cowan, I would take Daryl over any of those three. So he's OSU good, in my opinion. He's right on the door of, you know, the highest three-star in the country or one of the lowest four-stars in the country, however you want to cut that hair any way you want. I mean, he's right there. He's good. So, but I, you know, with him, the commits have been talking to him, which I kind of took as maybe that was the first step to Larry Johnson or Ryan Day coming after him. But the last time I talked to Daryl, there was no contact with the Ohio State coaches, but the commits were hitting him up. So, you know, that's that's kind of where that is. They, they've offered others, you know. So, you know, I don't know. I love Daryl. I, I think he would do well at Ohio State. I, he wanted that offer badly. Now he's, you know, committed to Wisconsin, loves Wisconsin too. So, you know, we'll see what would happen should they offer. I think he would definitely listen. And I think they could probably flip him, but I'm not sure he's as high on their board to replace Tamisi as others are. Yeah, and we saw our first movement, our first visible movement in terms of what Ohio State might do now um, on Tuesday. They offered Justice Boone a four-star defensive end out of Sumter, South Carolina, who has been committed to Florida since February. Um, I did talk to Justice this week. There is a story up on BuckeyeScoop.com right now if you'd like to to read his comments on that. Um, so they've offered him. They've been talking to him for a few weeks apparently. Um, so this didn't – this wasn't just a, a thing where they offered him and that was like the first communication he had with Ohio State. They have been talking to him for a few weeks. Um, it's hard to gauge. He didn't want to dive too much into what this means for his commitment to Florida. Um, I think he's, you know, trying to be politically correct there. Um, he is still committed to Florida. There, there are no intentions uh, in the short term of opening the recruiting process up to my knowledge, but he was very positive when speaking about Larry Johnson. He was very positive when 
He talked about Ohio State's recent run of the defensive ends, the Bosa brothers, Chase Young. Uh, that had him excited. Uh, I talked to someone down in Florida who believes that if by some miracle the NCAA will step in and allow visits this year, that um, – he's a candidate to be taking his visits. Um, so they, they, they felt that, you know, they felt he was somewhat solid to Florida, but it, it didn't feel like it was ironclad. It felt like, you know, if there was an opportunity to go out and take some visits here um, in the next few months that he would, he would probably do that. And that Ohio state would be one of them. Um, so we'll see what happens there. I a lot, so much of this right now is what the NCAA is going to do. I, I, I think most people know my feelings on it. I don't think we're going to see visits this calendar year. Um, but maybe that'll change. I don't, you know, if, if, um, you know, if, if everyone canceled football, maybe that could change where the NCAA would come in and say, well, there's, you know, there's not as much concern about being around the players because they're not in season and, you know, they might not even be on campus or really that accessible. So, um, you know, we'll see again, what the NCAA decides with the dead period. Um, So that's, that was our first movement on that front. So I thought that was interesting. Um, it, it feels like right now it's not going to be so much these guys who are out there open with their recruitments. It feels like any replacement right now, they're going to be talking to these guys, the Justice Boons and Daryl Petersons of the world, guys who are probably locked in somewhere else. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do. But Justice Boone was, was, a, was the first move, I guess. Um, I'm told they really like him. Uh, I'm told this wasn't just a, a keep you warm offer. I'm told this was an offer made kind of a move of aggression in terms of, hey, you know, we'd take you. <laughs> so you, you want that spot that just got, you know, opened up, uh, we'll take you. So I, I think they uh, I think they really do view him as a guy they, w- they would like to have in the class uh, now that there's an extra spot available. So we'll see. Yeah, I, um, yeah I can add there that I did check with um, – someone I know really well on the Florida staff and just kind of sent him a text. Like, do you guys think Justice Boone is solidly committed to you guys? And the answer I got back is we think he is with think in quotes. So uh, that's not the typical, you know, if you if someone asked Ohio State is Ben Chrisman a hundred percent committed, he'd be like, hell yes, he's, 150% 150% committed. So I didn't get that answer back. I got the, we think he is with thinking quotes. So that tells me Florida is aware, you know, probably of the justice moon commitment, like Ohio state was of Tamisi's commitment. So all commitments are not equal right now, you know? So, um, you know, what you're hearing from Ohio state's end and from what I'm hearing on the Florida end, yeah, it sure sounds like justice Boone is someone we need to, to track closely. Yeah, we'll definitely be doing that here uh, in the coming months. It's it's you know definitely a name to to throw on your board for those of you who really get into this stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. Probably a name to do a little research on and and start to you know throw on the huddle tape and whatever you, whatever else you guys do when you when you find out about a new name. So um, yeah, I got the impression that this is a kid you know not a definite flip or anything like that, but some someone that's worth watching here the next few months, especially as we try and figure out what on earth the NCA is doing with visits. So. Um, all right, well, we'll move on. You know, one thing we wanted to talk about today also, um, five-star wide receiver, Emeka Abuka, um, out for the Sooner Summit this weekend, it looks like, uh, not going to Norman for the gathering of, of recruits, um, which I believe is, I think, scheduled to kick off tomorrow. Um, you know, Bill, I, you've, you've been talking to some people about that. You know, what do you have on, on Abuka and, and kind of that situation? Yeah, it was interesting because a lot of our members have asked, like, you know, with Oklahoma doing this, why aren't our commits doing this, you know? And um, I did talk to someone involved at Ohio State, and they were not at all concerned with this. They were like, this is a total waste of time, can't meet with coaches, can't view the facility, can't go into the weight room, can't go into the stadium, can't meet with current players. It's like this is a total waste. It's not how we recruit. It's not something we would do. It's not something we're concerned with or worried about. So him going or not going was almost a a non-factor to Ohio State. So, you know, they they weren't concerned at all. They had no no thought of trying to get Jack Sawyer or Ben Christman to try to do this type of thing as well. So 
you know, their concern level was zero. And they feel really confident about where they stand with Emeka Buka, whether he shows up in Norman DeMar or not. And we definitely think he's not going to be there. But it wouldn't have changed how Ohio State felt about how they're positioned in this recruitment. And I would agree with them. I, th- I think they're in great shape for that kid. Yeah, I just think it's going to be too difficult um, for Oklahoma here without, you know, again, are there going to be official visits? It do- doesn't look great for that. And I think at some point, even guys like Abuka, who, you know, really want to take some visits, I think eventually if the NCAA just keeps playing this game every month where, oh, the deadline's the end of August. Oh, now it's the end of September. Oh, now it's the end of October. I just think some of these kids are going to get so fed up with that that they're just going to commit somewhere. So I think this could speed up Abuka to Ohio State, actually, this whole situation. Um, my my thing on the Sooner Summit was I, I tended to agree with, like, what you just said and kind of what the Ohio State angle was, which was, you know, it, these things are a waste of time. I, I tend to agree with that. I, I tend to agree that it it wasn't going to take a kid who was on the fence or leaning somewhere else and all of a sudden catapult Oklahoma to the top. But what it kind of was going to show me was, okay, if you're an uncommitted kid and you're going to go through and you're going to do this, you're going to fly to, to Oklahoma and take part in this. To me, you're all, you're giving a little bit away that maybe you're more into Oklahoma than we think. And so for me on that front, Abuka, assuming he doesn't show up, which, which is the expectation right now, that just kind of shows me, you know, if, if basically if he had shown up, it would have been, Oh, okay. Why is he doing that? Like, you know, it would almost seem to me that, you know, he's secretly in for Oklahoma to, to an extent of, or he's, he's definitely more into Oklahoma than what we're giving them credit for, or else why on earth would you do that? So I think if nothing else, him not showing up would kind of be validation of like, look, Ohio state is going to be incredibly difficult to beat here. And um, yeah, I think, I think that the longer the NCAA keeps playing this game each month of, of extending the dead period, the more and more likely it is that someone like Abuka could just say, you know what, enough, <laughs> and just and just kind of pop. Um, so we'll be keeping an eye on that as well. Um, you know, it's it's just it's interesting right now, Bill. We've been talking about this for a couple weeks. You know, this <clears throat> this Big Ten. You know, what happens if the Big Ten doesn't play this fall and other conferences play and all that other good stuff? Like, you know, right now, you know, they've landed Desan McCullough since the cancellation. So they're, they're up one and down zero since the, the announcement was made. Um, Bennett Christian, a, a really impressive tight end prospect out of Georgia, is set to decide on September 1st. I like Ohio State there right now. He's visiting Tennessee this weekend where he is a legacy recruit, so that's going to be a hurdle. But I, I like where Ohio State's at right now. Um, is this not really going to hurt them as much as maybe people thought? I mean, what do you, what are your, what's your take on the recruiting landscape right now in the midst of all this? Yeah. When we first saw, you know, the ACC, the SEC, the big 12, they're playing big tens, not your initial thought is that it's, you know, it's Armageddon. It's, 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 it's going to set them back decades, you know, and all that. And I kind of thought that. And then when you talk to these kids, it's like, it doesn't really affect them at all. The, no kid I talked to was bothered by this at all. Not one. You know, the, it, it doesn't affect. And, you know, Jack Sawyer is probably hoping they don't play in the fall and they play in the spring because he'll play for Ohio State this spring. So to him, it's probably great news. And then when you look out at the 2022 kids, you know, their college careers aren't going to start for a while. And I, I think the thinking on their part is that, the coronavirus is not going to affect their college careers. By the time they're enrolling at Ohio State, you know, we're, we will have put this behind us with the vaccine, better testing, whatever. So what we originally, a lot of us, you know, me included, kind of thought, oh, my God, this is, you know, this is it for Ohio State. It's over. And then you talk to these kids and it's like, it's not even an issue with them. So, no, it's not over and it's not really affecting anything. Now, you know, when you're watching Oklahoma, Texas, Bama, Clemson, LSU play every week and Ohio State isn't playing, you know, can that have some residual effect at that time? 
It might. It definitely might. But for now, I don't think the Big Ten ruling is affecting Ohio State's recruiting at all. Yeah, I, I think the thing right now is because you know the uh, as long as the other conferences haven't officially pulled the plug, which may still happen, by the way. But um, as long as well, the other conference, so. yeah, I, I I I still believe so as well. Um, but you know, as long as these other conferences are like clinging to their to to hope here um they're probably going to say some wild stuff to these kids i mean i'm sure some kids are going to be told look are, is the big 10 even going to come back next year when is the big 10 ever going to play again they're they're never going to play again and you know so you need to come here i'm sure yeah, there's some I mean, of that going on that. but yeah this kid, these kids aren't buying that their right I, I, I think that's a really tough sell so as i think i think you'd have to be pretty naive to think the Big Ten's never going to play football again <laughs> or is, is not going to play football for three years or something like that. Um, so as long as Ryan Day and, you know, the Big Ten coaches as a whole, I guess, you know, you can throw them all in there with this. As long as they can win the perception battle on that, that the absolute worst case scenario is that the Big Ten does not play football until September of 2021. If that's the worst, and right now they're going to sell them on the winter and the spring, as they should, that's right, what they should be doing. Right. But but even if even if you display twenty twenty one September as the worst case scenario, that doesn't impact any of the recruits. None of the recruits will no. miss time under those circumstances. Twenty twenty two, I mean, my gosh, it's an eternity away. You're gonna you're gonna convince a twenty twenty two kid that the Big Ten's not going to be suiting up when they arrive. I mean, that's that's almost an. Imp- I, I don't think anyone's going to buy that. So no. You know, as long as, as long as they don't, you know, give ground in that perception battle, I, I think recruiting will be fine. Um, but, you know, we'll see. It's, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting to follow. Um, you know, I guess we can kind of uh, dovetail into this. Let's, uh, let's humor everybody here. Let's pretend there's a winter spring season. Um, let's play the hypothetical. What would your expectations be for an incoming freshman an early enrollee? You know, are we talking, do you think every kid would be able to kind of jump into something like that? Would it only be a Jack Sawyer, Travion Henderson type of kid? I mean, what, what are your thoughts? Like if, if Ohio state's playing in like February or March or something, you know, are there some guys you think could, could participate at that point and, and, and really actually make a difference? My gosh, that, that's so hard to see. Um, you know, when you look at Jack, Jack would probably be the highest rated recruit, but Jack didn't play much defensive end last year as a junior, he's not going to play as a senior. And then all of a sudden he's going to step out there and he's going to, you know, be able to, to get by the Wisconsin O-line, the Michigan O-line, the Penn State O-line. It's hard for me to see that. I almost rule out the, the lineman on either side of the ball. And I, I do think a skilled guy, a highly skilled guy, like Trey Van Henderson, I think you could work him in, have, uh, you know, a, a package for him. I could see that. But all in all, I mean, I don't see how, you know, you, you step in there and play big-time college football, you know, without the – you're not going to have the advantage of all the winter conditioning you would normally get. Then you would go through – spring football in a normal year then you would have summer workouts in a normal year you would then have fall practice in a normal year and going through all that it's really hard for a true freshman to make a mark early on so how are they going to do it missing all that and 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 some of them missing their senior seasons i just hard for me to see that it really is but these guys are you know they're the elite athletes in the country so you know i could be fooled but my, off the top of my head, I'm saying no. There's no way that those guys blow by guys that are established in the Ohio State program. Yeah, I, I think people need to temper their enthusiasm on this. Um, you know, Ohio State I think, is going to have roughly a dozen kids enroll early, um, or that could. Um, how many of those, you know, if we're playing football in February, how many of those 12 are – seriously playing two, maybe three. 
uh, you know, unless, you know, and who knows, maybe this turns into extended spring practice with some scrimmages with, with, you know, Purdue comes in and you scrimmage. Now, if that's the case, you're, you probably are working in those young guys. Sure. Um, sure. But you know, if, if the goal is to play a legitimate season and like crown a big 10 champion, I just, you know, I, I need to see what this is going to look like. Um, you know, I'm not going to beat a dead horse here. I'm skeptical of the entire idea to be honest, but I'm not, I'm not going to mm-hmm. look, I, no one wants to hear me sit here and rail against this for the next five months. So <laughs> I've, I've kind of made my peace with that. And as long as they're talking about this, I'm going to talk, I'm going to cover it. You know, as long, as long as they're coming forward with ideas on how this could look, I will discuss that and I will humor everybody and we will look at things and, and, you know, have honest conversations about them. And I, I, I promise I will not continue to rail against this idea, but um, I just need to see how this is going to set up, be set up. I, I just don't, you know, I think that's going to dictate how much these young guys could participate you know, in a meaningful way. Um, so, uh, man, well, I mean, what do you, what do you think it's going to look like, Bill? I mean, what, what do you think, you know, they're starting to draw up these plans. I mean, do you think it's going, do you think they're going to try to play a, like a legitimate season or do you think it's going to be more of a, do you think the plans are going to be more centered around, you know, glorified scrimmages and extending practice? I mean, have you talked to anybody about that? Yeah, and nobody knows. I mean, this is this is 2020, which means anything is possible in any facet of our lives. So um, I don't know. I mean, who who knows at this point what's going to happen? I, you know, so much is riding right now on the ACC, the SEC, and the Big 12. There's a lot riding on how far those guys can actually get. You know, so until we see what they are actually going to do, and I don't see how they're going to get much further than where they are right now. Um, but w- what if they play a season? What if they're able to get through a season, which neither of us think is remotely possible? But what if that happens? Then where are we at come January, February, March? Then it's over at that point. I mean, Ohio State and the Pac-12 are going to have their own season. Right. Yeah, and what if they play? <laughs> what if they play six games and shut it down? Does Alabama pick right back up? And Clemson and I, I don't know. This is, I mean, we just don't know, and I don't even want to guess because. <laughs> yeah, just it, guessing. It's all. It's it's just a guessing game right now. But there's there's a lot riding right now on the three Power Five teams that are trying to play right now. There's a lot riding on what they're trying to do, and if by some miracle they're able to pull this off, then I, I think we go back to spring as we know it then. Yeah. Yeah, man. 2020 is not a good year for predictions. <laughs> uh, no, no, good luck. <laughs> All right, last thing I want to kind of quickly touch on here is, so, you know, they're going to give these guys eligibility, their eligibility back, which means there's going to be some type of accompanying – legislature that's going to allow teams to carry whatever the number is going to be, you know, a hundred, 105, whatever the number is going to be, they're going to be able to carry more than 85. Here is my thing about that. And I did post this on Twitter last night. Um, the schools who will actually be able to benefit from that, like the schools who will be able to carry, who will, need to carry a hundred or 105 kids can't afford to do it. Am I wrong? No, I mean, you're a hundred percent right. I was with like the, um, the Mac, the Mac schools, they can't afford no 105 kids. scholarships. Can they? Well, am I crazy? No. no, you're on the money. And the, and the dirty little secret is they can't afford to carry their 85 right now. They lost all those power five games. Kent state lost over $4 million with those games being canceled. They're not making the four million dollars up in that golf scramble I played in, believe me. <laughs> so they're losing all this revenue. They can't cover the expenses for eighty-five right now, and you're going to force them because none of those kids are going to go early. To the NFL, it's Kent State, so they're all coming back, and you right. still want to bring in a recruiting class of twenty to twenty-five. How are they going to pay and cover twenty additional players? They can't cover what they have right now with the games being canceled that they lost. 
I don't know. It's a mess. I mean, it's not a mess for Ohio State. For the people, you know, the factories that have unlimited money, they roll on. For Kent State, I, 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 these guys were concerned. They were scared and concerned. It's a total different game at Kent State than it is at Ohio State. Yeah, and, or Alabama. And the, the sick a different jo- world. These are different worlds. No, no question. But in this, but the sick joke of that is, I don't know that Ohio State and Alabama and Clemson are going to need those extra spots. A lot of those kids aren't going to come back. A lot of those and, and veterans, they they're just, gonna, they're just going to, they're just going to say, "Screw it, I'm going to the NFL." So you've got a situation where the teams like Ohio State and Alabama that could afford to carry 105 won't have that problem. They'll be able to carry. I mean, I think it'll be close to 85. I think it'd be 90, maybe. I mean, it's not going to be. I don't think no. Ohio State, Alabama, Clemson are, are going to have to worry about carrying 100. And you know, that's the sick thing about it is they could afford to, but they're not going to have to worry about it. And then the schools that are going to have to worry about it, like what do we do with all these freshmen? What do we do with our returning seniors? Those are the schools that can't afford it. They they cannot afford it. I would I would venture to guess. So I mean I I don't think I I may be undershooting this. It, I would think at least eighty percent of non Power Five schools cannot afford to carry a hundred kids. Maybe maybe ninety five. I mean maybe ninety five. I may be way undershooting that. There's a few schools in my head that I know have strong followings, attendance, et cetera. You know I, I think of a school like Houston. You know could maybe. I mean they're 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 kind of a almost a Power Five program in in terms of the money they're able to generate. You know, there's a couple of them out there that I think could maybe navigate their way through this. But I look at the vast majority of these non-Power 5 programs. They cannot afford They cannot afford this. Well, we've already seen Stanford cancel non-revenue sports. The Iowa administration already put out a statement that they're going to be $100 million in arrears. Um, so maybe, maybe it goes further than we think. And it's not just Kent State and Akron that get hurt here. Maybe it does go up pretty far up this chain, farther than we think. I mean, this is a huge deal. You know, and then you add in the lost revenue last year from the March Madness. I mean, there are some serious budget issues facing these schools. And, you know, it may be worse than, you know, Kent State and Akron. And, and what, do you, what, do you tell, what do you tell the uncommitted high school senior right now that's got a handful of MAC offers? Because I've had, I've had high school coaches a few this, this past week or two call me and say, you know, my kid's got seven, eight Mac offers. He, you know, the big 10 schools are still talking to him. What should he be doing right now? And, you know, I know our thing is to not get involved in the decision-making process in terms of telling kids go there, go here, go there. That, that's, that's, that's one, that's like rule number one of this. But, you know, I've told high school coaches like, look, tell your kid to evaluate his, six, seven offers and freaking lock in a spot somewhere immediately like that. I mean, is, is that, that's what you have to do right now, right? If you're, if you're an uncommitted senior right now, knowing the, the potential financial ramifications down the road and not knowing, you know, these schools, not knowing how they're going to handle it. Don't you have to immediately lock in a spot? I mean, waiting for the big 10 to come calling right now is, is, I mean, that's, that's a dangerous thing to do in normal conditions. But right now I'm thinking, you know, if you've got offers right now, you better freaking find a spot. This has always been my advice going back 15 to 20 years. And again, I never would tell little Johnny, hey, you need to go to Kent instead of Miami. I don't get involved in that. But like you said, if you've got, you know, right now, the offers you have are pretty, it's pretty much who you are right now. So Take the Mac offer you like the best, the, the best relationships you have, the place you feel the most comfortable and commit and lock in your spot. If Michigan State wants you three months from now, they're not going to be bothered by the fact that you're committed to Bowling Green or you're committed to Toledo. Those offers can still come. And at that point, you reevaluate where you're at and, and go from there. But no, my advice is always that, you know, unless you're Terrell Pryor, Jack Sawyer, you better be committed by the time two a day start for your high school season, because that's pretty much who you are as a recruit. We know who you are by August one. So yeah, the clock's ticking in a normal year. That would be my advice in this year. I mean, I double down on that advice or triple down on that advice. You better, you better grab something and lock in a spot right now. And then you're locked in. And then if you, you know, if Boston college offers you or Pitt offers you evaluate it, but at least you've, 
you've locked in your reservation. You have your spot. So I think, you, you know, you're right on the money. And I feel it's sound advice every year. But in a in the coronavirus year, yeah, yeah, way more important to do that today. All right, you hear that, kids? Make your decisions. <laughs> if you're a boy, if you're a fringe power five kid, make, make your decision. Um, all right, well, we've we've rolled on here about thirty minutes, so we're gonna we're gonna cut this one off now. But um, as always, we we appreciate you guys listening. We, we understand it's a very frustrating time if you're an Ohio State or Big Ten fan. And we're going to keep uh, covering recruiting for you the best, the best way we know how and kind of hopefully uh, get out to some scrimmages this weekend, I think. Uh, we've, we've got a little bit of plans here. We, we hope the, the plug isn't pulled on anything before we get a chance to get out and do some stuff here the next week or two. So uh, we'll keep pushing forward with that. And uh, hopefully uh, you guys continue to follow us over on BuckeyeScoop.com. Thanks for listening.